If a century ago, these mountains in Western America rang with the cry, Gold Rush, today the appropriate shout would be, Ski Boom. For a long time, we hid under a blanket in the winter to stay out of the cold. Then suddenly, winter time was open to us, and we discovered fun, a chance to run away, to be happy, to find a new world and populate our lives with other people. This is what the ski boom is all about. Spontaneous and free, it's become a way of life. Ski boom and all the fun of winter is being brought to you by United Airlines. United has daily snowbird flights to all of the great western ski areas. And by Hertz. Hertz has special ski vacation rates to take you right to the slopes. The world of ski boom is a magnetic, exhilarating place. A progressive existence that never quite repeats itself. In the past 10 years, the number of skiers in the United States has tripled. Construction is up on gondolas and chairlifts, hotels and condominiums, developing new resort areas and improving on those already established. Why do the people come? What's the attraction? What is it about these mountains along the spine of Western America during the winter? Easterners dream about it, Europeans envy it. Dry, cold snow with enough air to keep it from packing hard. Experts from every country claim it's some of the best skiing in the world. Snow conditions and people. Postcard mailing weekenders or month-long vacationers. Experts or first-timers. The social or the rugged. On the mountain, a skier is a skier, young or old. family thrives here because skiing is a great equalizer. Age and status are out the window. Father and son are both beginners with the same purpose in mind. You discover that you can enjoy skiing on any level of experience, that the bunny is reaching out to better himself just as the expert is, always. To accomplish the basic snowplow can be a rewarding achievement. To conquer it together is to make the sweetness of life. It's not long before you discover that skiing isn't everything. In the mountain world, there's a life that extends into all activities to encompass all types of people, all expression, all desires. Quick to learn and long to remember, it's the essence of what goes on when the skis come off. This sit ski is like a bicycle. Get on and go. Take a broom and a ball and you've got broom ball, a harmless hockey. or just skate free on an outdoor ice rink like this one in Sun Valley, Idaho. Or swim in a heated pool. You come to this place with an open mind to enjoy the life it offers. today is aggressive skiing. We want to make you all junior racers, okay? So I want to see lots and lots of knee and ankle bends up and down. The instructor is Diane Harris at Winter Park, Colorado. 
use lots and lots of pole plants, okay? Unlike sports that you probably do in school, like football, basketball, and so forth, you can use skiing all your life. The teacher may tell how it's done, and even show you. But you've got to put a lot of yourself into it, too. Sometimes it's everyone for himself. It's the urge to be a man skier while still a child. It all began a long time ago. It was a masculine thing to do. Rugged men, warriors, made cross-country ski tracks for days and weeks on end. Then it became a sport, and still it was a man's game. But things are different now. Listen to Susie Chaffee skiing here at Vail, Colorado. Maybe there's a need for a soft touch in skiing, a more sensual type of thing. do a lot for you and show you a lot of neat ways of expressing yourself rather than just conquering the slope, making the slope conform to you. I think people who haven't quite mastered the, the sport can't get quite as much out of it because they're still working on some of the basics, even though they are going through the, the excitement of really learning. And I think learning is terribly exciting in itself. But as you get better and better, you don't have to worry about these basics. You've got them in your back pocket, and with there, you've got the vocabulary to work with. In every activity, there is a plateau reserved for a few of the best. And so it is with amateur skiing. It's men like Gustavo Toni of Italy, competing here in the World Cup races at Heavenly Valley, California, one of the international events that are prelude to the Winter Olympic Games. It's also Tyler Palmer of the United States ski team, one of America's hopes for the Olympics. These are some of the men who will meet on the mountains at Sapporo, Japan in 1972 where they'll race for Olympic gold, silver, and bronze medals in the alpine skiing events. For Tony and Palmer and dozens more, the men's slalom is an exhausting speed event that demands every bit of concentration and physical skill you can put together. These are days of glory, but also of great trial. If you're Rick Chaffee here in slow motion, you throw yourself through gate after gate, remembering every pole placement and skiing harder and faster than you ever thought you could. Rick knows what's happening. So does Tyler Palmer. It's what you make it, you know, if you're really, if you feel you haven't done well and you still won, you, uh, you're not gonna be as half as pleased as if you didn't expect it. I do try to be as loose as I can. I couldn't ski if I was really uptight all the time, you know? And you're sort of in limbo and you don't really, you're not really aware of what's outside. You're not really aware of what you're thinking. You're just going and it's all happened before. For me, when I go out of the starting gate or when I finish and I've won, it's really a stupid, it's like, uh, it's really a great rush, you know, it's really super. You can't, you can't really describe it in terms of this world, you know, it's something else. Tyler Palmer off for his slalom run, racing against the clock. Then, Gustavo Tony. Tony has surprised everyone in the World Cup. 
now aside from the United States, France and Austria are faced with another major competitor, this man from the Italian Alps. To see Gustavo Toni in the slalom is a study in complete body control. Every muscle, every move, shaving the poles so closely, letting his legs absorb the shock of an all-out downhill run. In the men's slalom, Tyler Palmer finished third, the first American behind Gustavo Toni, the winner. Tyler reached out, strained, charged it with love and strength, but this time failed. There will be no thought of losing at Sapporo, though, only winning. The ski racer struggles with the obligation in all of us to prevail, to do better than the best. Just as it is with competitive men, for the women, this is the pinnacle of their lives as amateurs world. They'll race in the slalom, and eventually, like the men, they'll go to Sapporo. Girls are excellent slalom racers, pushing to the limit all the time. France, Austria, and Canada, and now the United States. Barbara Cochran of Vermont, star of the women's U.S. ski team. She has beaten the clock, run faster than anyone else. Barbara Cochran is the winner. America's hopeful for the Winter Olympics. Our friend Betsy Clifford of Canada was second. That's great. Hey, are you good. second? Yeah, second. Okay. This is the reward. Doing it right and knowing that you're good. It's what everybody wants, really, to do things right. And if you're learning to ski, it should be the best and quickest way. The newest thing is to take it from the kids, simply to begin on short skis. We did before. You don't have to worry about stopping because you'll stop anyway. Just slide down like this. Sounds real easy, and it is. It's called GLM, Graduated Length Method. The emphasis is on direct active turning of the skis, beginning with short controllable skis and graduating to longer ones. It's a workable teaching process based on the fact that the resistance of a ski to turn is proportional to the square of its length. These eager beginners are part of a revolution if all goes well, within a week, they'll be skiing down a hill for intermediates. To enjoy the sport is no longer a distant hope. Oh, and your skis are on your feet. It became obvious to us uh, some time ago that short skis turn easier than long skis. It also became obvious that the, the idea of teaching on short skis had been grossly oversold and some impossible promises made concerning teaching with short skis, which I think it turned a lot of people off, especially the professionals, which was too bad because it's obvious that we can teach people to ski more happily with less frustration, with less tears by using shorter skis. You see much less of the frustration and the anger, you know, and the feelings of, of humility and embarrassment that you often get on the long skis. They feel in control of the skis. They're having a good time. It's been a long time since Herman Goldner had a skiing lesson. He's been at it all his life since he was old enough to walk. He's a mountain man, a mountaineer. Walking the streets of Aspen, Colorado, you'd hardly recognize him as possibly the world's foremost acrobatic skier. But that he is. He is a contradiction to the limits of what man can do on skis.
Most skiers are content with being able to come down the hill with a certain amount of style, in good form, without the frills. Others spend years on the mountain perfecting a way of skiing that appears to border on disaster, but is in fact perfection in a different vein. Master the incredible and you have Corky Fowler and the men who ski with him in his demonstration team. What's your name? Hip. Why don't you ski? Because I got my skis down there. And, and you are going to ski now? Uh-huh. I hope I'll see you on the slopes. Yeah. Can I have your autograph? Oh, sure. At Breckenridge, it is not improbable that a young boy will meet Jean-Claude Keeley, who has taken a house here in the Colorado Rockies. You don't want to be a, a and the boy will imagine himself skiing with the gold medal winner. Our association with people is so acute that sometimes we become them entirely and forget our own ways. We are spectators in awe of whatever is fine and exciting to see. For a boy to be Jean-Claude Keeley is an indulgence never to be forgotten. follow the mountains, and we become a part of the environment that is the world of snow. For a long time, vacationing skiers were discouraged by a lack of places to stay in the mountains. Modern conveniences were few and far between, a condition that still exists in some parts of Europe's Alps. Charm is the extra ingredient. In Park City, Utah, the past is still maintained, while development and new building goes on. A look at yesterday, a spirit indestructible of lives and times gone by. From Vale to Jackson Hole, Aspen to Breckenridge, Sun Valley, Taos, Winter Park, Steamboat, Park City, Heavenly Valley, room upon room from economy dormitories to luxury suites and private homes, everything for the skier. What was little more than a lodge and campsite a few years ago, has transformed into a full-fledged resort. Nature, for such a long time inaccessible, is here to be a part of, to enjoy. The night is an open door on our imagination. It's a time to relax. It is magnified with color and sound and the movement of people. It's a time to dream with your eyes open, to lose all sense of proportion between our own sensations and those of the delightful bath that bathes us. Taos, New Mexico. There is an old culture here that makes the link with the new ski world. It is the Indian thought that bridges the gap of time, that echoes the ancient prayers that call for men to move through nature without leaving evidence of their passing, to be within nature. At a place called Steamboat, Colorado, you will meet a young man of fame and great respect. He has brought a gold medal in skiing to the United States. They call him Captain America. His name is Billy Kidd. This is his world of grace in movement 
and the excitement of doing what only a few will dare. We imagine ourselves on an open mountain, skiing free with the experience that we've gathered. At Jackson Hole, Wyoming, we find Pepe Stiegler and others like him who have come from Europe to make a home here in the great mountains of Western America. To be here is their choice. They've put aside the search to ski and enjoy this way of life. In these mountains, there is a private relation which is the enchantment of human life. Some, like Stein Erikson, best express it by saying that skiing is beauty. Here is a champion who has come up all the way, from a Scandinavian childhood to the World Cup, to the Olympics, and the highest honors. Now a professional skier with his home in the mountains of western United States. It is the life Stein Erikson has chosen and made for himself. There are many reasons why uh, people choose to ski, I believe. Uh, some look for the challenge, you know, coming down a hill and being able to handle it. Uh, some look for the beauty of it, and I believe that that is why I ski. The combination of uh, the beauty that skiing offers and also the combination challenge. When you ski down, you might hit two feet of powder snow or you might hit a very mogulier run that has hard packed snow. And just for me always to be in the environment of snow, mountains, beautiful people. And with beautiful people, I mean not necessarily their looks, but just the way they think, the way they are. When we add it all up, there is no doubt that the ski boom is here to stay. And what the limit is going to be, I'm not able to say. In the world of snow, anytime, anywhere, the human eye is the best of artists. And to ask yourself how the painting is made is a detraction from the beauty you see in it. Relax and let it come to you, as will all good things, spontaneous and unannounced. Brought to you by United Airlines and by Hertz. Remember, before you plan your ski vacation, be sure to write for United's Ski Boom brochures. Write to Ski Boom, Post Office Box 27, Glenview, Illinois 60025.